Hey there, I know you're in lockdown, and I'm in lockdown, so we might as well play some guitar, don't you think? If you don't know me, Alan Matthews, Classical Guitar Shed, and this is, let's just call it the CGS Lockdown Show, because we're just going to talk some guitar for a few minutes, just for fun. So what are we going to do? Let's talk about the first few minutes of your guitar practice. So we'll just take this little bit by little bit and I'll walk you through how I start my practice every day. So to begin with, without the guitar, before even doing anything, I just shake it out a little bit. Warm up my hands. I like to rub my fingers together with them in there just to get them, just to get them warmed up a little bit. I'll also move my arms around a little bit. You can see my the tape here on my button so it doesn't clink on my guitar. That's, that's backstage information. So after doing just a little bit of stretching and warming up, I start to think about just relaxing my body into the chair and feeling the bottom of the chair. I like a nice hard chair with just a little bit of a pad, but starting to release my shoulders and arms and really working on bodily tension, getting into the body as much as possible and just feeling any sort of excess tension that might be happening and then just releasing it. Might lift an arm and notice how my weight changes on the chair from that to that and just play with it. Neck back and forth, thinking about the tension around my eyes and my forehead, that little muscle that keeps your glasses on. And then finally, I'll pick up the guitar and then hold it and then just notice how that changes things. So just to hold the guitar sit here and just put my fingers on the strings, maybe hold my, hold, just touch the neck and say, how does that change things? How does that change my physiology? All the muscles, everything else, just shaking down. Maybe let an arm hang, release your shoulders there, and then just bring up an arm and then touch, touch the strings and notice how that changes things. So it's just a pure body exploration. This is a nice slow process. It's all about feeling good. I love this part. It's, it's also a nice motivator to, to start practicing. So it's less the, the mad, frenzied, fast stuff and more just getting this, this body awareness and this exercise of can I touch the strings without my muscles all tensing up and grabbing like this. And so then just touching and then I'll just do a few Closing the hand motions. If you're a member of the woodshed, you know this purely well because it's right at the very beginning and we do it constantly. But getting that motion through there, closing the hand into the palm with the tip joints really nice and soft, and then maybe playing a chord or two, doing that. And then one of the very first things I do then is do just a nice scale, small scale, with I and M alternation. In this I do super slow, checking in with body stuff between every single note. So the, the pattern I like to use, and I just, just it's not any better than any other pattern, but it's um, in the fingers, it would be one, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, although I usually start it on the second fret. So it's one, three, one, two, four, one, three, four. And this is just a major scale. If you're into the scale shapes, this is part of a G shape, um, movable major scale. And so that's the scale. But in order to play it, I like to do this, which is first get ready and then just say, no, I'm not going to do anything. Because whenever you first start getting ready to do something, whenever you think, okay, I'm going to play a note, then all the little muscles in your arms, in your body, they get ready. They just kind of grab just a little bit and they get ready and then so I'm trying to get in front of that and just be calm here and just be calm and still and just be able to touch the string, get ready and then just play one note, sneak up on it, no I'm not going to play it, no I'm not going to play it and then just sneak up on it and then stop and notice how that changed everything how once we play a note our tension levels they bounce up in our muscles because the work is being done here. We're pressing over here, we're playing over here. And so then the tension muscles rise up and then they just kind of slow, and then they fall back down if we, if we release them. 
So the goal is to get them back to where they started. So as long as it takes, okay, I'm completely still, I'm completely quiet in my muscles, one note, and then now getting back to that point. And I'm doing that with the best stroke I could possibly use over here. So really being intentional with the right hand move, movement, moving just like we did with the, with the closing the hand. So from the big knuckle, tip joint kind of flexes through the string right into the hand and then the M, the M finger pops out and it's just waiting. So just one note at a time. And it's not much to listen to, but if you pay attention to your body and really release everything between each note, then it's endlessly fascinating. And notice your lower back. I have a tendency to arch my back and, and really uh, pull back into my lower back. And so then releasing that. I'm thinking about the string crossings of how exactly I'm gonna change the strings with my right hand. Placement behind the fret with the left hand. Just everything just so. So this is like the world in miniature. And I love this. I love this time because there's no, there's no musical complexity. I'm not trying to do anything with volume or dynamics. I'm not trying to play a big fancy piece. It's just this one little scale that I've played a million times and just playing even just one note, but then it's all body. It's all, how am I using my body? Where is there excess tension? Where am I doing more than I need to? And then go back down. As long as it takes for that, I think of it as like a like an old thermometer with mercury in it, where it goes up and then it just and then it comes back down. So like a tube with liquid in it. And so then I'm just wanting that tension to go all the way back down. Whenever we're playing fast. If that tension goes up and then it never comes back down, then it just starts going and going and going and pretty soon we're just redlining. And everything we play is, is just tense and we're just at the edge of our ability. And that's not where we can make good decisions and, and beautiful tone and everything else. So just trying to do this as well as possible, purely idealistic in this exercise. here in my throat and the muscles and the neck and the swallow muscle and the back of the tongue and everything else and I'll then I'll just go up one fret and do the exact same thing after a little bit of time I'll start to speed this up and in between each note still looking for a complete release so we get back to absolute square one and if a note messes up or I buzz it or something it doesn't really matter but it just tells me something. It's just feedback saying, get your placement right over here, buddy, or look at your hand position, or you're using too little tension now. We actually need to do a little bit more to get the work done. And between each one, there's this possibility for a complete reset. It takes a lot of patience, but it only has to last for a couple of minutes. Even just doing that for a couple of minutes at the very beginning of your practice gets you in touch with your body so that then later, when you're practicing the new piece and it's all difficult, then I can, then at that point, you're more likely to notice something creeping in. Oh, I'm really tensing up my shoulder or I'm gritting my teeth or whatever it happens to be. Or, my placement of my right hand is off or my left hand's in a funny position. Or I think there's a moment here where I could actually release that tension. I have a space, an open string. So could I use that spot to release tension just like I do at the beginning of my practice? So once I get into that, do a few of those, of the scales, then I might go into some arpeggio patterns. And depending on what I'm doing, then I'll just use the primary arpeggios. So PIM is one of them. I'm not, 
completely in tune, I'm sorry. But then just doing the exact same thing there. And I'm just going to use this couple of notes of the this practice progression here. But the goal of this is the exact same thing, which is just the muscular point of it. And that's one of the great things about using a really simple pattern that you memorize and you just use it forever because you don't have to think about it ever again. So I like there's this practice progression um, that that members using that you can find on the on the site to um, classical guitar shed slash arpeggios, a r p e g g i o s, and it's just a, it's just a template with which to work. So the less that you have to think about what notes am I playing, the more you can think about other things. And those other things include this body awareness, the way that you're moving your hands, how you're using your body. Like, what is your lower back doing in this whole affair? Like, if you're going, if you're doing this PIM, what's happening in your legs? And it's a, such an indulgence to be able to spare the bandwidth while, while practicing to do that. And is there anything I can let go of in my intention-wise, in, in my hands while I'm doing it? So, to each note, is the tone quality like I want it? Is it clean? Am I getting a lot of extra thumps and clicks and buzzes and all kind of weird things or string stuff? Or is it really clean? Like, is... There's that kind of thing. Like, if your nail hits another string that's ringing, it'll go... Vzz. So, you can really listen for all those little things while also releasing as much tension as possible. And I just find this a glorious practice. Because the goal is to be quiet in your muscles, to be completely aware of everything and to stop anything extra from happening. So really there's as much active not doing as there is doing. So yes, play in this pattern, but then all my attention is on not doing the things that I know I don't want to do, like tense up or uh, be hasty and uh, place my fingers funny or get lazy and do something or arch my back or, what, or slump or whatever it is or let my mind drift and think about what am I going to do? What if the, you know, shouldn't I, should I really be practicing right now? I need to be doing my the best spring cleaning ever because I have so much time. I can finally clean out the garage because I have nowhere else to go. There's, there's a million things, right? That we could be thinking about, but the, but the goal here is to actively not think about those things and to actively not do anything except the absolute necessary. And so then any sort of really simple warm up, just two, two notes on each string, can be just as effective. I happen to use this little major scale shape. I happen to use this practice progression, but it could be anything. It doesn't even matter. So what the content of it is, the main thing is that it's the same thing all the time so that you don't have to think about it anymore and you can think about something better. But like, how am I doing it? It's just like the old um, adage of talking to dogs. It's not what you say, but how you say it. It's the exact same thing in music, right? It's not what you play, it's how you play it. You listen to a you know, Yo Yo Ma or Emmanuel Axe or some you know like major player. You you listen to them play the simplest little tune, and it is just drippingly gorgeous. And the reason is because of this stuff. It's because their entire body is involved in it, and they have that's part of the the road to mastery is getting past just what are the notes and really thinking about how am I playing it. And this exercise is purely one hundred percent how and not what. So it doesn't matter what notes I'm playing. I could just play one, two, three, four on the strings. But, if I'm, but the main goal is how am I playing them? Am I playing them with ease in my joints? Am I playing it with great placement right behind the frets? Am I playing it with a nice movement in my right hand? It's really a wonderful opportunity to pay attention to just quality. And you don't have to be an advanced player to do this. In fact, this is what makes you an advanced player. 
is this stuff. The more that you do this type of practice, the better you will become and faster. It doesn't matter if you can play a tune that has a million notes in it. If you play it like, if you play it like a beginner, if you play it, you know, at the absolute limit of your ability, then that's the limit of your ability. However, if you play an easier tune, I'm such a fan of the, of the easier tune for this, then you can get past the notes and work on the how. Work on the body how, work on phrasing and beautiful tone, connection of notes, consistency of the tone, consistency of volume. There's so much to think about and to work on within such simple things that the question is, what are you paying attention to? And this takes a little bit of getting used to because most of us just say, what's the pattern? Oh, I know that pattern, move on next, what's next? And so they try to add in new content where instead of adding in new content, the other way to add novelty and interest and excitement is to challenge yourself, to be at the very edge of your ability with something else, edge of your ability with cleanliness. Like, can you play the arpeggios and not have any, any bumps along the road? Can you do it focused? Can you keep your jaw nice and not clench the whole time? Got some squeaks in there. Throughout, so it doesn't get, it doesn't increase. I stay there too long, so it doesn't increase as you go along. Ah, it feels good to do that because, not because it's some big complicated thing, but because the whole focus is on being open, being free in the joints, doing it cleanly, listening super hard, and just going for pure quality and making it this joyful expression of just getting warmed up on the guitar. So this is getting warmed up. This is how I start my practice every single day and have for forever, for, for many, many years with these same things, with this same little scale. I like just a little, I like using the scale at first with just the unwound strings because then I don't, it just is shorter. It's just shorter and sweeter and it feels nice in the fingers to, to play the, to play the nylon strings at first. I just like it. I like the feel of it better than getting started right on the wound strings with the scales. You could easily do some different scale, but I like the short little one octave and I like a nice simple uh, chord progression I can use and then work on different, different right hand patterns. And I use PIM today, but it might be very, uh, I, I add I have different complexities that I work with over time. So I'll find something that's really difficult for me or that I start messing up on that's not as clean. And then that'll be my one that I do every day as my warm up for however long it takes until that one becomes clean. And then I'll find another one. So it's just bit by bit. Have a wonderful day hanging out around the house. It's springtime, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. And I uh, hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for watching. And see you soon. Take care.